in quarantine land and Richard has already started drinking. Well done. We're back to happy hour with Candy Event Consulting. Uh, I'm Jen Hadley and way over there, Daryl, say hi. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the funny guy in the middle, that's Richard Booker. He is one of our local clients and um, he is here to talk about his event. Um, path of things that have been going on. We have had some interesting turn of events with you specifically, uh, learning <laughs> technology and trying to revamp our original strategy plans. Say hi, Richard. Hi. Hi, ladies. How are you? We're good. Thank you so really much. Really well. <laughs> and um, I would, uh, I'll, I'll say your, your organization is called Your Path to Purpose. Yep. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you do what your background is and um and we'll go from there sure so my background is uh, over 30 years of coaching individuals most of whom are in transition many of whom um sorry are are struggling with figuring out their why why are they walking the planet what is what is their mission in life um and they've often come to me or we've met because they've been forced into a transition that they hadn't anticipated um, so they're dealing with life and career upset. Um, and my organization and my practice is centered in on working with these individuals to figure out what do I want to do next? Uh, how do I get myself to a place? So on, on Sunday night, I'm looking forward to Monday. And that's what I spend most of my time doing. And then I also spend time talking to audiences about the, the broader talk of, topic of purpose uh, and, and writing on that topic as well. That's awesome. And you have written. And I have, yes. I wrote a book, uh, released it uh, in 2016, called it's, it's Enough to Be on Your Way, Your Path to Purpose. And I'm delighted to share with everybody that I'm launching a second edition of the book called Your Path to Purpose. Uh, and that will be out, um, well, certainly before an event we're going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, it'll be out before June, both as an ebook, as an audio book, and as a hard copy book, whichever is your pleasure, or frankly, you can go for the trifecta and get one of each. <laughs> that would be my choice. Personally. That would be the choice. And honestly, there's so much to it. And and the uh, when I'm thinking about when you use the word transition, and um, we've been having this conversation for months already with you and with people that are are surrounding you, supporting you, and what you're doing right now. Um, what has that transition been like with a lot of your clients right now? So there's been, uh, we'll talk about the events a little in a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing the difference like from, let's say three months ago to the transitions that are happening in Calgary and, and honestly, like all over the world now, but with your clients, what are, what's coming up for them? You know, it's funny as you, as you were talking about that, the, the image came to mind of this uh, commercial that's on television um, and actually, I'm not even going to tell you what it is because it would be, it's ridiculous. But the analogy actually works. I think all of us and my clients included felt in one form or another, that we were all in this water slide. It was well lubricated and we're just sliding down our, sliding down the path that we follow. And it's one that we were familiar with, but it's, for some of us, it's really enjoyable. For some of it's like we're stuck on this path. We can't see if we get off of it, but at least it's moving. At least we're doing something. And out of the blue, without anyone's knowledge, certainly without anyone's consent, somebody turned all the water off. I don't know if you've ever been on a water slide when there's no water. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. You are one of my favorites in terms of analogies. You have the best analogies of anyone. Yeah. And the conversation is always just so fun. But well, thank you. So everybody, I think, finds themselves in this place they hadn't anticipated and that's completely unfamiliar. Yeah. And now really questioning, how do we, how do we get this momentum back that we had? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we build momentum? Uh, how do we maintain momentum? And it's really been challenging. And so some folks have decided that now's not the time because in addition to everyone being home, now their kids are home, of course. And, and in some cases, some of the people I've been working with have children and, and they, their roles have changed from just from just parent, not like that, that wasn't a big enough role, but now parent and educator and working with schools. And so the opportunity to work on themselves and what's next and their purpose is simply is not possible at the moment. So it's kind of ground to a halt. 
Um, some people are still working on it. Others I still work with. We've adjusted our meeting times so that we, we meet before their day really starts. So before all the feet hit the floor in the morning, we're having a conversation. Uh, so by the time you know people are up and looking for food that might involve that individual, <laughs> we've had our conversation. They've got their plan for the day, and and, and it's all, all about that. that. All about yeah. that. <laughs> isn't this, though, isn't this though the one of like a great time for that conversation? So many yeah. out of work, so many yeah. um, in transition now. Like everyone's, a lot of people are at home without any work at all. So yes. now's mm -hmm. to say, am I happy with what I've been doing? Should yeah. I go back when it's available, or maybe yeah. now it's time to re reevaluate? So. Yeah, well, and you, you ladies know I've been talking to Amy Crawford every week uh, about the, the series that I'm doing, Purpose in a Brown Bag, and and that was one of the things we talked about is that you know in the midst of a global pandemic where hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people are going to die, we don't know. None of us have any idea when this is going to end or what it's going to look like when it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much uncertainty, and if that wasn't bad enough, we're in the worst economy we've had since the Depression. Uh, you can buy a um, a chocolate bar. For less money than than you could buy a barrel of oil, yeah. um, over a million people lost their jobs in March. What's the point of talking about purpose and why, why would we bother with that? I mean, that's ridiculous. Why would we plan an event for God's sake? That's just ridiculous. Well, it's true. In, in fact, there's no better time to do the planning because while well, we're all learning about what this new reality is like for us. And we're all figuring out our way. We were, you know, Lisa and you and I were talking this about this earlier, about all the stuff that's online now. Yeah. Like all of us, all of a sudden went from having nothing to look at to tens of thousands of streaming channels that we could spend our time looking at, and it, it, it's overwhelming. Um, but this is a perfect time to sort of go inside and do that work to figure out yeah. who's the me I want to be when this is over. Yeah. What are the changes I want to introduce in my life now that will be in place so that I'm ready when the world's ready, whenever that happens? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we have some ideas of some events that we were going to have going on. So let's talk about that. First, we started with um, <clears throat> an event, which was called A Day on Purpose. That was going to be on June 20th at Mount yeah. University. Mm -hmm. Leading up to that, we had had a uh, live in-person purpose in a brown bag lunch and learn that mm. you, uh, heroically took over and went on with. Tell yeah. us what those were supposed to be like and then how now they're they're changing. Yeah. Well, if you can imagine getting yourself to a place where you were really struggling with finding your purpose and then now committed to attending this event called a day on purpose, a full day dedicated to talking about this topic, bringing in some thought leaders and some people, some some fellow journeyers or fellow seekers um, and experiencing that what that was like. And I know when we were talking about planning the event, it was in a physical space. We're going to have, you know, 400 people, uh, hundreds of volunteers, not hundreds, lots of volunteers greeting people as they came in, lots of, of places and things they could interact with as they came in to sort of wade into the day as it was going to unfold. And then hear the stories of those that have been seeking purpose and sharing where they were at and what they learned through that whole process in a very interactive way and live and in person, followed by five really, really incredible uh, speakers sharing their own stories and their own view on on this whole journey, uh, plus plus mine, and and then lots of inter interactive things that we'd be engaged with through the day. So all of us coming to the end of that experience of full eight hours, uh, probably feeling like there's nothing left in the tank. And that was one of the richest experiences we've ever had. Lots of new friends, lots of important new relationships and new thoughts. That's what the day was holding. Uh, and uh, then came COVID-19 and said, <laughs> not so fast. <laughs> so welcome back to that. Then we, uh, as part of the process of welcoming people into this stream of thinking, uh, we launched Purpose in a Brown Bag. So this is a live series taking people through 10 consecutive weeks, 10 bite-sized pieces to break into this topic of purpose 
in some in content they get their hands around every week with homework to do every week. And we had a really good group joining us every, every week downtown. And then our friend COVID showed up, the body pooper, you know, and uh, sorry, Arnold. And, um, <clears throat> And uh, say the same thing. <laughs> all of a sudden, we had to go virtual. Um, and Jen, I think you were on uh, you were on that first session with me, and um, I, I remember talking to a few people about doing a B live session, which is obviously what we're doing now. And uh, of course, it's simple, right? I mean, could, could could there be technology that's easier to use than Facebook B live? I mean. Come on, anyone could do that. Except <laughs> for me, right? No, you did it. Did it. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> there are no words to describe how technically declined I am. Uh, you pulled and off. I'm a guy, we, we were just talking about this an hour ago. I'm I'm somebody who <laughs> is extremely comfortable in a room with with real life people. Um, and uh, and the energy that's in a space like that is so dynamic. It's so wonderful, and it's very much my element. And I'm not at all fussed by the number of people that happen to be in the room. You know, whether it's you know ten people or or ten thousand, it, it, it's it's a co very comfortable place. Yeah. Now to go into this virtual space where everything I practiced doing the day before wasn't producing the result that I had anticipated. While I know I've got, you know, 25, 30 people waiting out there in Etherland somewhere. <laughs> is this guy going to start? I mean, he said he was going to do this. Like, hello, where is he? And you may recall, I think it was in that very first session yeah. that I had to switch from B Live over to Zoom and get everybody to log into Zoom. And I had to send anybody, everybody. I mean, it was just a grown That was show. the second <laughs> Oh, that, was, that was the second one. Okay, well, I blotted out the first one. Okay. <laughs> That's the bandwidth. We're blaming bandwidth on that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're very generous. But you know what was miraculous through all of it? Um, to have, first and foremost, for anybody that's watching, to, to know that when you have people in your corner who have unyielding faith in your cause and what you're trying to produce, and by the way, those are the two people on my left and right here, um, that makes a world of difference. To try and do this on your own, I mean, I'm sure there are people that are far more technically competent than am I, but um, when you have people in your corner helping you plan these things and execute them, a world of difference, particularly when it's these two and their incredible team. So um, I, had, uh, I had a huge safety net working for me. Uh, and this space, this virtual space is becoming increasingly more comfortable. And fundamentally, it's creating an opportunity a platform for the information, the, the content that we're sharing to, to, to be held in the proper light so that we don't let the noise of technology get in the way. And that's, that's pretty important. And I think well, those I are what I was just saying earlier today, Richard, you were talking about um, how many people, that was at a different event. You were speaking at another event, but it was yeah. held more virtually. Um, like what countries? Like this was international for you. Yeah, that was uh, last Friday. These were there were people from South Africa. I was one of the first people who logged on, and then there was Los Angeles and Boston, New York, um, Southwest Calgary. That was a that was a big reach. There was even somebody I think who showed their address and been <laughs> across the street, which was kind of neat to to know that there were so many people from all over the place, including my own hometown, that, that were there. Um, so that's, and that's something that frankly really wouldn't happen in an in-person event. Yeah. Uh, well, it could, but you can know, like if you were attending a day on purpose, we had talked about that. In fact, having people zoom in to the day virtually, yeah. it's not the same thing. No, and, the and you know what's really interesting, sorry to, to cut you off there, but you know what's really interesting about um, the topic of a day on purpose actually is universal. Yes. Um, when we look at, and, and I was listening to CBC last night, uh, actually doing my grocery shopping and feeling like I was free for like an hour and it was uh, just driving around town. But but this idea of um, Chris Hatfield, so, so in yeah. the space shuttle and he's talking about this one world and, and he has that message quite often if you've heard him speak mm -hmm. and, uh, and that we're all in this together. And when you start to look at not just what's possible online, but 
where are people showing up and where are they coming from? Where are they watching from? Um, the world seems actually smaller, I would guess. Yeah. And, and uh, not so much that it's a different world. It just means that um, people are now showing up for each other in different yeah. ways. And, and because we're all feeling some of the same anxieties and the same maybe lack, like you're talking about the, um, I love the, the picture of the, the water slide and then the water shuts off and, yeah. and we're all just kind of squeaking our way down yeah. to get to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, that's me. But, <laughs> but there, there's this feeling like we are truly all in it together. So how do you, yeah. how do you feel the message of purpose has now translated online to a wider audience for you? Well, so if we go back to the water metaphor, I think, you know, if you've ever seen water flowing, it will always find its way. Mm -hmm. uh, and any time it's blocked, it will always find a way through. Yeah. There's no stopping water. And in a manner of speaking, th this message of purpose, which is fundamentally why we as individuals are here on this planet at this time in this community, interacting with these people, having this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so the the life force of that topic sustains regardless of the platform in which the conversation is being held. In fact, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I think one of the cool things about what this is has ha what's happened as a result of this of this pandemic is that we're now reaching people we might not have ever reached before, uh, building relationships beyond the borders. So, taking Chris Hatfield's view of the world when he was in the International Space Station, there's no borders, there's no nationalities, there's just people, one planet all in the same place, going in the same direction, there really isn't any getting off. Like we have to figure out a way to be together. And that works better when we all know what our purpose is. When we worry less about, I mean, yes, the economy is important and um, all of those things are you know, important, but the country we live in, it becomes less important. It's more the people that are living that we become now aware of. I would, I would love to be an opportunity to go and do what we're doing, what we're talking about in South Africa and in Los Angeles and in Boston and some of the other places where those people were because the conversation, as you said, Lisa, is a universal con conversation. And now we're starting to have it on a broader platform. Well, so that, that gives us an opportunity then with the new plan for a day on purpose to mm -hmm. bring the people from South Africa and from Boston and from New York, if there's anyone left in New York, um, yeah. all those other places, it's just, it's a great opportunity. So now, um, Moving forward with that plan, um, do you want to maybe touch on that a little bit and sort of the future yeah. of what we're doing? So we just we were just talking about that, in fact. And so looking at the day as it was planned, now bringing it forward into this new reality we're working with yeah. um, and how to continue to make the content of the avail available, this concept fundamentally, the overarching concept was to foster a dialogue and start a dialogue on purpose with with a broader audience. And as you said, Jen, absolutely, this platform provides us a vehicle to reach a much broader audience. How cool would it be to have not just the voices of those we live with in Calgary to be able to participate in this, but people from other places in the world through other communities we've connected with. So for example, with uh, Creative Mornings in Calgary, what an incredible organization and part of a global group um, doing some incredibly cool things, uh, the opportunity to, to sort of cross-pollinate those groups and share the content and that learning and a dialogue now within the construct of what we have of this day on purpose is really, really exciting. So that's the platform we're moving to. Uh, and folks will be seeing more information about that coming up online in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what piece what pieces of what it was when it was a face-to-face, -face, everybody in the room interacted, what pieces of that do you not want to lose? So when we, when that goes online, you know, the timing might be different, uh, people and the, the schedule is going to look a bit different, but what are those things that you want to make sure that you're transitioning those well to an online event? And great question. It You know, the... The nature of this journey for, for anyone that's on this path, and in, in a matter of speaking, I think we all are, um, those that feel we know our purpose and those that feel we don't, um, 
So one of the things that I feel it w was most poignant with the, the day, the way we had it planned, you'll recall, we were going to start with a panel of individuals, six people who were at different places on this journey of figuring out their why. Uh, one person who knew exactly what it is, knows exactly what it is, but not quite sure what its next expression looks like. Another who felt, well, I feel like I've got a piece of it, maybe the middle part, but I'm not sure the top and the bottom and someone else who had their purpose, then I got taken away from them because of the economy uh, and a range of other perspectives. And so represented in that group were, were people, our people, that the audience would identify with. It's like, I'm hearing my story in, in what people are sharing. I don't wanna lose that. I want more than anything for people that, that, that join us on this day to feel that they're with their people. Mm -hmm. they're with people who get them, who understand them. Um, you know, in, in coaching practice, when I went through my formation, uh, I, was I was told that we want to make sure more than anything else after every conversation that individuals feel seen, heard, and understood. And taking that into a day on purpose, I want everyone that attends this event now virtually to walk away with it feeling like they've been seen, they've been heard, they've been understood and that they found their story represented in what they heard that day, that they walked away with, uh, I, know, I know what purpose means now, and I know what, what place it holds in my life. And I have a framework now that I can follow to start figuring out mine or refreshing mine or, or understanding what my expression of that purpose is now. And I know what to do and who to turn to if I get stuck. So those were the things that we started on this journey with. Those are the things I want to make sure we keep. Love it. And and Jeff, what do you not want to lose? Like, <laughs> and I have to I have to ask that question because honestly, Richard, and um, when we get involved, it's like we become personally involved, and yeah. we care very much. We feel very much like we said almost from the beginning that um, both you and the speakers in the palace, um, we felt so at home with the group. Mm -hmm. and so aligned um, and for us it's even hard to, to take a look at that change because we don't want to yeah. lose um, the essence of what we felt was happening within the group. Yeah. So Jen, uh, I'm putting you on the spot, but for you, um, what are those elements that you want to make sure that um, we are holding true to when this goes online from your perspective? I've been pretty, uh, and you guys both know, I've been pretty vocal and adamant about not canceling this one, mm -hmm. um, especially because of the timing now more than ever. Um, yeah. I always thought this was an important conversation. I've been through and go through my own, you know, journey in this, in this uh, uh, discovery. And I know we all have. Um, and I think that now more than ever, you know, maybe I want to be a homeschool mom but I don't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <that>. maybe <laughs> this is the time to discover if that's really a thing, you know, this is, mm -hmm. the time. And if, and if we don't take the time and a lot of people are talking mm -hmm. about reflection about is who am I going to be after this? You know, I think mm -hmm. this is a reset for the, for the world. I think it's a reset for the environment. It's a reset for humanity as a whole. And I think that from this, this is the lesson that we're going to take forward as to how we're going to be after um, when we can go live, when we can stand in the same room together. Or am I still going to hug you when I see you or, or yeah. is that just not going to happen anymore? You know, yeah. so I think that um, for me, uh, especially not just as a co-planner of this event, but as an attendee, um, someone who loves this message and share and wants to share it. Um, because I, I believe in it so much. I think that um, having that that message that so that people will want to keep going and keep keep learning and keep coming back to, you know, where is a good starting point. You know, this was always meant to be a good starting point for anyone to continue on looking looking towards their purpose and, and figuring out what they want to do. So if your job is no longer existent or if your industry is wiped out or whatever the situation is, now is the time to figure it out. If you're forced to come, if you're forced to, you know, find another career path, pick one that works for you and pick one that makes sense. And, and I yeah. think this, this is going to be the way to do it, um, to really do a lot of self-reflection. And Richard, you've created a really great um, 
platform and a lot of really good for us to be able to, to go that way. So mm -hmm. um, once this is done and once we do a day on purpose online, which I'm so glad you let me twist your arm into keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really hard. I mean, I know, like, just the rubber arm. Yeah. <laughs> but when I told you today that I like, I'm adamant about you keeping it. I'm really glad that yeah. you shut me down. Um, yeah. But I, I think that when the time comes to do those more personal one-on-one, uh, smaller yeah. groups, um, maybe some retreats, maybe some uh, incubators, like we talked with Connie about the other day, uh, the personal stuff where people can actually do the work. Mm -hmm your book, go through the workbook that you're going to be creating. Um, that's really going to help people. So this is a really, really great way to get their foot in the door to, to see that to, to understand what it all means and where to go from there. And and those speakers uh, that we had lined up and still hopefully do, uh, they're amazing. And and I yeah. just, you know, being in that in that presence was it's been so great. So, you know, and your analogies, of course, are my favorite thing of all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They are, sometimes they're really good. They usually are. Most times. Yeah. <laughs> Most times. So yeah. where, what's next for you, Richard? Like, um, we're with you uh, through Thick and Thin. This mm -hmm. is something that we're committed to as a team. And yep. and honestly, like Jen says, I'm I'm really excited to see what this can look like. Because yep. every step of the way, and, and maybe you do this with clients as well, Richard, where it's a recommitment. So um, with every step, and it hasn't been easy for you to put all of this in motion. There's a lot of things in motion that weren't in motion six months ago for you. Yeah. And you are just embracing it and you're taking the next step and taking the next step. And even in that action, um, I was saying there was another post that I was responding to. And, and I said the, the magic is in the motion. Because when you take the step, then there's opportunity, and then you feel like maybe you've accomplished that next step, and mm -hmm. and gives you that. Um, you might not have hit your purpose yet, but you're like you say on the journey. Yeah. Um, so, what is next for you, for Richard? Like you're, you've got a lot going on, um, a lot of logistics happening. You've got a big life and mm -hmm. and a lot on the go. But what's next for you? Well, thanks. Um, so. Most important, the, the first uh, the first thing is is solidifying the plans for day on purpose. So uh, that's already in the works. In fact, I was just e emailing our colleagues on that topic when we when we joined the call. Um, mm -hmm. I'm launching the second edition of my book, Your Path to Purpose. So uh, I'm I'm doing the final edit of it this weekend, or not this weekend. Sorry, today, finishing it tomorrow. So it'll go. It goes to um, the uh, the partner that I'm working with on that piece. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the end of next week, we're going to be putting the last pieces together. So we'll be launching an ebook, uh, a hard copy book, and also an audio book. So it'll be available in those three formats. Um, uh, also looking at uh, launching another event, a uh, series, in fact, an ongoing event called Thought Leaders Masters Dinner. Uh, and so this will be a smaller, more intimate event hosted uh, a number of times through the year where we bring thought leaders together to tackle some of the, the biggest challenges that we face in our community and in our world through the lens of purpose and walk away with that wisdom that we then inoculate mm -hmm. our worlds with going forward. Um, and then the other piece that we're working on is, you mentioned it, Lisa, was the retreat that we're looking at. Uh, so for those that, um, that are taking part in another event, I'm, I've been hosting Five Pillars of, of Sustainable Career Mastery the, this um, a brown bag series that we've been doing on purpose, um, the ongoing conversations that I'm having with Amy about, about a similar topic. So those that have an appetite to say, okay, I've, I've uh, been to the tapas bar, I've tasted some really interesting things, my interest mm -hmm. has peaked, I really don't know what to do next and I'm not sure how to do that, where do I go, how do I move into something that may be more substantive, and in a more focused way will will really launch me forward. And so that will be the retreat that we're working on and that'll be uh, an event will be coming up in November um, specifically uh, for that. <clears throat> and so more information coming out on that, but the date we're working with, I think we can, we can tell folks the date is the 21st of November. Yeah. Um, and this will be a full day event. Um, and uh, if, th if this is something where 
you're thinking, yeah, this whole concept of my why, uh, what I'm innately good at and how do I engage my world in that? Because come November, we're going to be a long way through this journey of what we're dealing with today. And at that point, we're probably going to be in a place where we have lots more questions than we have answers that we don't know what normal is going to look like. And going back, as you said, Jen, to what we used to do and what we used to have, well, that may not be there anymore. And so if we wait until this is over, whenever that might be, and then start figuring things out, especially if we're not working and using job postings as our vehicle to return to a life of normal, uh, Lord help us. I, I, um, I don't have a lot of confidence in that producing the outcome these, that all of us need. But I do have a lot of confidence in the brilliance that's in our midst, these amazing people that we're meeting at these events that we've been hosting and the conversations that we've started. Uh, and I have a ton of confidence with what we can produce when we do that. So this event in November is really going to help people pull that clarity together, come out of that whole journey with, with, with a plan of where to go and how to do it next. Mm -hmm. so, I love ending on, on this point if I could Richard because we're, we're getting close here and we got to wrap up but, but all of what you just said um, actually speaks to your heart of seeing people uh, find their way <laughs> uh, we've been using the, um, the image of a compass mm -hmm. and that everybody has that inner compass and to the end of, um, for every one of these events, I believe your heart is that you want to see people find it, uh, find where they can help, uh, find where they can get support, um, really understand concepts that are making sense to them, that they can implement. Um, this isn't just uh, for the rest of you that are out there <laughs> in Facebook land or wherever you're gonna be seeing this. Um, the idea of taking a concept and, and getting it in your head, that's one step. Mm -hmm. And then really taking it to heart and putting it in motion, that's a completely different game. And um, Richard, everything that I know of you, and I know Jen and I have had enough time and enough dinners and lasagna and, and uh, <laughs> what, an, what else have we had together as a, as a team, but um, – <laughs> Everything about what what I understand of you is that you want to see people find that way, mm -hmm. and your personal coaching, like right down to the um, here's the concept, here's what we're talking about. This is how even uh, allowing people to digest it, but in any event that you're planning, um, that's what gets me really excited. Is that this isn't, an, and we say that all the time. Jen and I always have this thing. It, it's like. Um, an event isn't just a one-time thing. An event is building on relationships you've had, building yeah. on messages you've got out yeah. building on all of that experience. Um, we did a strat session with you. Goodness, it feels like forever ago now. Yeah, December, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. And what, what we do, <laughs> what we do in strat sessions is we actually not just for you, Richard, but with our clients is we actually talk about an event cycle. And we talk about 12 to 18 months and what does this look like? Where have you come from and where are you going? And and what I love so much is seeing you embrace the process. Mm -hmm. um, but I also see, and, and Jen, you mentioned this too, but I also see the benefit that people will get um, by joining a Thought Leader Mastermind uh, dinner or coming to the retreat or having coaching you know, under your, under mm -hmm. your wings of you understand the process and, and you get this. Mm -hmm. And you also get that everybody's on a different path. Yeah. Um, so the event can't be a cookie cutter event because it's really ha it has to speak to each person. Yeah. Wherever they're at. Yeah. It meets, so, exactly. It meets them where they are. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Exactly. So we're so thrilled. Uh, thanks for coming on. End of the day, we're all <laughs> we've all had a long day. I'm sure. <laughs>